Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to my video breaking down the differences between the new M1 Pro and M1 Max, the chips that are available now in the brand new MacBook Pros. This video is more for people who don't understand all the tech jargon, all the insider speak. And so in this video, I wanna help you make sense of these chips and, and what they mean if you're thinking about buying one. And I guess at the end of the day, you'll also realize if you even need one. So this video is less about, wow, the new MacBook Pros and drooling over all the new ports and everything. We're just really talking about the chips and which one you might get the most value out of. First things first, let's talk about what's the same between these two chips. First off, we have the same up to 10 core CPU. This is the processor. GPU is different, we're gonna get to that in a second. So these up to 10 cores, Eight of those are performance cores, two of those are efficiency cores. What does that mean? Well, let's just start with why you might want multiple cores in the first place. More cores means your computer is going to be more efficient. Why? Because the more cores you have with your CPU, the more processes can be handled simultaneously. So two cores is gonna be able to handle two things at the same time, 10 cores, can handle a lot more. So we have these two different types of cores. If you're doing something really processor intensive, you're gonna use those high performance cores and then your computer's smart enough to know to switch between things if you're just gonna do some lighter computing as well, things like emailing and web surfing, those can be done by the high efficiency cores. And what's the big benefit there? Well, the big benefit is preservation of battery life. So that's why that's a good thing. So the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, these are Apple's very powerful chips meant for, let's just call them that crusty old term, power users. So if you're gonna be using these, you're really looking at running some very powerful apps. These are not just computers designed for emailing, for web surfing. So if you need to maintain high performance when you're doing a lot of multitasking and multitasking while you're doing some really processor intensive tasks, then these are the chips that are gonna really appeal. Now we have the neural engine. If you're like, what does that mean? What is a neural engine? It's really designed to help accelerate machine learning powered tools and processes that you're gonna encounter. Now, a lot of that's gonna end up being used for like really high-end video work. Other things like voice recognition or image processing would also take advantage of this as well. But basically, this type of machine is a video editor's dream because it's going to hardware accelerate your video codecs, including ProRes, but not just ProRes. And so it's just going to make your life faster and easier when, or your workflow anyways, faster and easier when you're working with video. Now, you can see in Apple's breakdown that these two different chips share most of the same features, but they do have some very key differences. And that's really what you clicked on this for because you wanna know what's really different and does it matter to me. On the M1 Pro, you get up to 16 cores for your graphics processing. Now this is different than the CPU, this is the GPU. On the Max, you're gonna get double that, up to double that with 32 cores. There's a big difference. All right, PC gamers, are very familiar with the word GPU. Uh, GPU matters a lot when you're playing some AAA gaming titles. On the Mac side of things, where gaming is, uh, serious gaming is uh, less of a thing, I guess we'll just say, what do you need all this GPU power for? Well, what a GPU does is it determines how quickly your Mac is going to be able to render graphics, yes, in games, but also in graphic intensive apps. So if you're working with CAD, if you're a high level designer, if you're doing video editing, of course, or you're doing some kind of animation, these are the kinds of things where a GPU can make a really big difference depending on the type of work that you do, how intense it is, the kind of apps you work with. Now, one of the specs that you're gonna read about when you're comparing these two chips is memory bandwidth. 200 gigs per second versus 400 gigs per second on the Pro versus the Max. If you're just doing office related tasks, then even and even photo editing, unless you work with some just ridiculously crazy raw files, this is not something that you need to worry about. This is for somebody like a, a video game developer or a 3D artist. These are the sorts of people that this spec really matters to. Anybody who's working with big machine learning models is going to care about more data flowing quicker 
but for your office related tasks, it's not gonna matter at all. Hey, if you're new around here, let me just say, if you're liking the vibe of this video, why not take this opportunity to get subscribed? Because I got lots of Apple content hitting the channel all the time with the same style. Like hint, hint, if you're interested in my opinions of these actual devices, the hardware, you want my review unboxing, then go ahead and get subscribed. But let's just talk about the differences in memory. Apple's got a really interesting memory setup going on here because it's a unified memory. You got uh, the option for up to 32 gigs on one side, and up to 64 gigs on the other. What does it mean? Why does it matter? Well, in layperson's terms, faster RAM, faster memory means that all the different components in your computer can talk to each other faster. It speeds up the processing. With the unified memory, I guess what you really need to know or just comprehend at a basic level is that all the different things that need to access the memory can access the same memory in the same place and the decoding of things is just sped up. That's the net effect. Basically, the more intense your workflow, then the more RAM that you're gonna wanna have in order to keep things working more efficiently. So the M1 Max being able to support more RAM, more memory, that equals dramatic increases in speed. That's all there is to it. And you could just tell that just by saying, hey, that's a higher number, but that's what it all breaks down to. So if you're looking closely at the specs, you're also gonna see some things about video encoding and decoding. What does this really mean? Well, if you're a video editor, it does look like the Max is going to encode your video files much faster. So again, this is like the video editor's dream. I'm just talking about video editing stuff because that's what I do so much of the day. But it makes a huge practical difference. If I'm applying all these effects to my footage and I'm having to sit there and wait for things, sometimes I have to go do something else if it's a crazy effect and wait for a while. It's just dead time. So if that's sped up, like up to five times faster, like some of the marketing says, that could be a serious thing for me. If I'm a pro and I make my money doing pro things with this device and it can save me time, then I would gladly pay extra. That's what it boils down to. Now, something that's crazy is you get dedicated acceleration for ProRes stuff. So if you're shooting in ProRes, and of course, you know, anyone who's working with this kind of machine is working with something other than an iPhone, but you can drop in ProRes uh, footage from your iPhone and the workflow is a little bit crazy right now because it's not USB-C even, it's still a lightning port and it can take forever. I've made that mistake too many times. I'm like, I'm gonna shoot this in ProRes, and it's gonna be awesome. When I look down, it's a six minute clip instead of you know 30 seconds or something. It just takes an hour to transfer over to my computer. But regardless, you know, being able to work with ProRes and chop that up, it's already so efficient, uh, so much faster because you have this dedicated ProRes acceleration. That's pretty incredible. So the Max is the chip to get, I think, if you're doing anything that's serious on the video front. Now, blah, blah, blah on the video stuff, right? There's only so many video editors out there, but what about other apps? Like what differences are you gonna see for different sorts of apps? Let's talk about a couple. If you are a developer and you use Xcode, then Apple is saying that you're gonna be able to get 3.7 times faster project builds with the 10 core CPU with both the M1 Pro and the Max. If you're into audio stuff and you're using Logic Pro, then you're supposed to get up to three times faster uh, performance with like an amp designer plugin, for instance, and that would be compared to Apple's 13 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, the 16 core M1 Pro GPU can now offer 9.2 times faster 4K renders in Final Cut versus the M1. And the Max's 32 core GPU is gonna bump that up over 13 times. Wow. But maybe you're a designer and you work with raster stuff. You use Affinity Photo, for instance, or you do vector work. Well, the M1 Pro is gonna be up to 5.6 times faster for you, or the Max is gonna be up to 8.5 times faster using this program for, for these types of things. These are big jumps, I keep saying it. Like, this is massive. Whenever there's specs like this, and you know, you some people were really disappointed with Apple's charts you know, Apple breaks things down in the simplest possible form for people, right? Like I'm trying to do in this video. And, you know, they just want to give you the impression using their forms, their charts, that look, this is a lot faster. And I think it's, it's easy to be like, hey, every MacBook Pro is better, but this one is like holy grail better versus previous versions. It's gonna be, you know, I haven't got my hands on it yet. So this is like pre-review. This is just research information to help you make a decision. But I'm just saying, this is a really significant amount of performance enhancement. You know, in the past, it was like, oh, this would be like 1.7 times faster. 
we're seeing numbers like five times faster, 10 times faster for things, you know? These are big jumps. And here's the thing, I've had my current 2018 16 inch MacBook Pro for a few years. And I mean, I could get more mileage out of it, right? But in this, this machine, I mean, <laughs> with this kind of performance, we'll see where the industry goes in terms of cameras and TVs and, and where video quality heads, right? But it's so powerful, as long as the hardware holds up, I mean, I can see using this for four or five years. Now, I'm not gonna want to use it that long because probably something's gonna come out and I'm gonna be like, oh, wow, I want that now. But this is really pushing things forward in huge ways for something that's portable, that's not just tied to a desk. All right, so I prattled on about a bunch of different stuff, but when it all comes down to it, which one should you be shooting for? Which one works for you? I think this is really the meat of the video here. Now, if you're doing mostly CPU intensive tasks, so processor heavy, not necessarily graphics heavy, guess what? You may not need to go for the Max. The Pro might be right up your alley for less money. Isn't that good news? On the other hand, if you're really into graphics intensive stuff, then go ahead and upgrade to the Max, I would say, because I think it's gonna be well worth it, even though it costs so much more. The gains in terms of performance are going to be very real. You're gonna feel those in a real way if you go with the Max and you're doing some graphic intensive stuff. I think I already mentioned some job titles where that's gonna make sense. Let me just reiterate once again, I know these just came out and everyone's gonna be like, oh wow, that's the thing to get. But for just your average daily routine for day-to-day -day computer tasks, non-specialized, non, I hate to say professional, Apple's really targeting created professionals here, but for non-creative professionals, these both are just like a massive overkill. So you don't need this, you know, <laughs> for, your, uh, for your regular, day-to-day -day tasks. Honestly, for a lot of just normal people, I'm just gonna say the regular M1 for video editing, for photo editing, is gonna be really awesome for you. There's still some, that's a really impressive chip, the base M1, right? If you're just a regular consumer, that M1 is super appealing. Still, really the way to think of the Pro and the Max though, I think is that the Max is just a, a better, more powerful version of the Pro. And what I mean by that is, you know, I talked about CPU versus GPU, but it's not like the Max can do things that the Pro can't. It's just better at doing those certain things that are really graphics intensive in particular. Does that make sense? In my opinion, 32 gigs of memory is probably gonna be just fine for most people out there. I saw a lot of uh, video people in their pre-orders and they weren't maxing things out, right? You gotta be Hollywood level, game developer level, if you really need to be maxing these out. I know some people are just gonna go max them out because it's fun, right? And they just wanna do it. It's like, you know, driving a Ferrari, but on your desk. I get it, I see the appeal, but I think 32 gigs for most people, I mean, that's all you need, even for you creative professionals. Let's just say if you need more than that, because only the max offers that, you already know who you are. And if you don't, then you don't. And now we come down to, the well-worn out phrase of future proof, right? The M1 Max, of course, is going to feel more future proof. And I kind of just hit this point already. I'm already using my, what seems ancient now, 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2018 with the touch bar, rip touch bar. And you know, it's funny, I made a video about how to get more out of your touch bar and the views went up on that video after Apple got rid of it on these MacBook Pros, go figure. But what I'm saying is, you know, I can still use that and get away with it. So these are going to be insane for many years to come. So if you're into that, if you're into future proofing and you wanna hold on to this, make this investment now, you're ready to be buying, this seems like the right thing. Hey, it's gonna serve you well for many years to come, as long as a laptop can, I think. All right, I don't wanna just bore you to death. Hopefully I didn't do that. I did just want to hopefully kind of explain some of the differences, help point you in the direction of what you may or may not need. Uh, without like getting super geeky and nerdy about it. And so hopefully we succeeded there. I don't know. Let me know if you found this useful or not. I had some questions about the shirt jackets that I've been wearing recently. If you're interested, I'll leave you a link down below where you can check them out. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed to Daily Tech at Daily Tech across the internet. We're on Twitter, Instagram. Things are popping on both platforms. Don't want you to miss it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.